Hello, everyone. Happy to be back with another Young Indian. <coughs> right now, we have with us Abhiniti Gupta. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Abhiniti. Thank you, Dr. Subod. Hi, guys. I'm Abhiniti Gupta. And um, I guess I'll talk about uh, myself first, and then I'll move on to what I would like to talk about. Um, I am currently pursuing my master's from the School of Advanced Studies and I have been um, associated with economics since class 12th because I think that is when my passion started for it and then I did my undergraduate course in economics through Sri Ram College of Commerce Delhi University. It was a bit um, like it, it, it is a very uh, you know giving college so they give you a lot of opportunities and as a student there looking at everybody running behind things you get a bit confused as to where you want to go you want to you know um try everything that is there but then you need to you need to think, you need to stop and then think what you wanted to do that is what i did and then i realized that i would really like to take ahead economics as my major and then i did and now i'm currently pursuing my masters um, I am very inclined towards, um, you know, climate change and green economy. And um, not only that, I mean, I'm really interested in gender economics as a whole subject, which is a totally different subject. I think we can talk about that later once again, if Dr. Support allows. But um, today, I would really like to talk about um, the current situation, the green economy, as everybody says, and uh, whether or not it's a necessity or, you know, what exactly is being happening in the global context. So um, we do know that, you know, there are a lot of challenges due to climate change and environmental degradation, which uh, is causing us to, you know, um, make a, to a swift transition into a more sustainable economy. Um, this transition is, um, it's, it's a necessity. Um, as the impacts of climate change, um, you know, are very long lasting and it's not just on the economic prosperity, it is also on the social well-being. It's more towards the social well-being. After all, like we are, um, you know, uh, we want to survive at the end of the day. So there is an urgency for this transition owing to the alarming rise in the global temperatures, then the extreme weather events. I mean, we keep listening to things that are happening. Um, there are some floods in one corner, some in another. So it's very crucial, you know, to actually address this. And um, we also need to look for more alternatives for the coming generations. So, um, yes, I mean, the first when we talk about climate change, when we talk about green economy, the things that come the things that come to our mind is renewable energy, green finance, climate change mitigation policies. Is the economy is this the economy that we stay in is a green economy or not? What are carbon credits? So many things. So um, it is you know, it's a bit um intimidating, but as we go ahead, as as we learn, we realize that no things should be taken as and when, you know, it is needed to be. So, um, talking about renewable energy, which is like a key driver to the transition to a sustainable economy, um, it has been rapidly growing. And, uh, you know, um, not just in India, but globally, because um, countries are setting ambitious targets to increase the share of renewables in their energy mixture. I mean, today only we, uh, I mean, um, today only I just yeah. read in the news that India is the third largest um, country, uh, it, like it has reached the third largest to become a renewable energy sector. I mean, which is something which is very good. Uh, most of the energy, like 70% of the energy is from the renewable, uh, renewable sector, which is uh, amazing after China and US. So, I mean, I was very happy to hear that. But again, we have a lot of targets that we need to fulfill. And these targets should be, I feel that they should be, you know, scalable and they should not be unattainable targets. You should not, you should, you should take steps at a time because, you know, Rome was not, Rome was not built in a day. It took many days to build it it was step it was a uh, built step by step um the 
now i've been talking about climate change for a long time but uh, we talk about a uh, green finance which is basically the mobilization of capital for sustainable investments and projects um the thing about green finance is that uh, from an economic perspective we see that because the renewable sector is a very emerging sector you see that the demand for finance is abundant but the capital is lacking so yes. that's like that's like that is something which almost every sector is looking for in this particular sector and every country is looking for um you talk about renewable energy we talk about solar energy a major gap in solar energy is that definitely the news that i quoted is amazing but then when you are installing solar uh, you know power plants you see that people are not able to maintain it because people don't know how to maintain it you are installing free solar uh, solar plant uh, solar power plants in our in our homes that's perfectly fine but then people are not able to maintain it so how is it and the the cost that they that the maintenance is involved people are not aware about it and are not willing to pay for it so we need to look as to what is the right value as to how we have to you know make the the solution more sustainable definitely renewable energy is something that is sustainable but is it sustainable in such a huge population because end of the day i mean on quoting a personal example i have um in my colony i have like a lot of people who have employed you know solar power plants but then when they ask when i asked them or i had conducted a survey about the solar power plants and how effective they are they they were a bit like they were a bit hesitant ki should we install should you know is it is it worthy to maintain it electricity end of the day matlab we are all very you know um money saving people as we call it <laughs> to be honest so they're like ki itna to nahi bach rahi bijli to kya lagane ka fayda hota hai then when you explain the different offsetting mechanisms ki uske piche ka jo economics hai ki nahi isko aise karne se aise hota hai then they're like yes let's go ahead with it and let's maintain it because the maintenance cost is low and the benefit that they receive from it is very high as compared to you know um, other things it's like a long term benefit so i feel that when you are installing such you know solar panels it's very difficult it's it's like a new it's a new technology i know it's it's been a decade or more but it's still a new technology if we are talking about you know if people in the urban areas are not educated we are putting free solar power planners in the rural area so it the 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 amount of education that needs to be you know given in this particular context is very important which has not been happening i mean i have seen this i've talked to people i had went you know i went for a survey so i mean it's very visible um another thing that um, i wanted to cover is that the uh, you know green finance can also not only enhance energy efficiency but it can also improve the green energy projects that are currently happening so um if we are talking about um carbon credits or even if you know we are talking about um um me- mechanisms that actually help in carbon financing if we are able to adopt those in the economies it will be like it like like dr subodh mentioned that it, it it's going to be a revolutionary idea so yeah. we need to we need to we need to instill those revolutionary ideas to move towards a more sustainable economy so that it's easier for you know for us as citizens to implement it to work towards it and the goals should be very small now not that small ki ghar ki light band kar di yes that is something which you've been doing for the for a long time Earth Day पे almost I think all the schools Earth Day के दिन we all do that कि lights off करते हैं and we celebrate something but with the current situation that is there every day should be an Earth Day for us and for the whole world is what mm-hmm. I believe mm-hmm. we should ensure that you know we are working towards it not just for one day but every day of our okay. lives. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
another thing that um, I think a lot of people are not aware is that um, there is a concept that we have um, which is called the Earth Overshoot Day. Um, Earth Overshoot Day is basically, um, how do I explain? Earth Overshoot Day is basically um, when you are like, in the year, there is a day which is known as the Earth Overshoot Day. So it is basically when the, uh, it marks the date when humanity has exhausted the nature's budget for a year. So sure. every, economy has a, every economy has a budget which we have uh, for a financial year. It's similar for the natural resources. In 2023, the Earth Overshoot Day fell on August 2nd, which means post that we are in a deficit of natural resources. This year it was in, um, if I'm not wrong, this year it was in March, I guess. Um, I it was it was in August or something only. Uh, it will be to be more precise. So from like post that we are in a deficit of natural resources. So we can so imagine if you are in a deficit and if you're not able to fulfill that financial deficit for an economy. How difficult will it be for us to full to you know cover that natural resource def deficit? That too for the years that are you know for the past few decades because Earth Overshoot Day used to be somewhere in November a, a decade ago you know a decade and a half ago but now it's getting closer and closer to January for a normal year so I mean it's a very grave situation if I point it out in terms of data because a lot of us are more convinced when we quote data in terms okay. of topics. Yeah. Um, apart from that I mean similar to Earth Overshoot Day we also have Plastic Overshoot Day which has which follows on the same concept and I'm sure people are not aware about it and we need to spread awareness for that particular time because it's very important to work towards these things. Um, green budgeting, which is being talked about a lot these days, I feel that green budgeting is important, but at the same time, you need to, you know, address particular sections and particular, um, particular things that are being under more vulnerability. So, for example, if we see that in a global context, um, a natural resource rich, um, country, might not be, you know, make uh, contributing to the pollution or the carbon emissions much as compared to a developed country or, you know, someone which is an emerging or a developing country. So, for example, if I quote South Africa and US, <laughs> US is amongst the top, you know, con uh, contributors to carbon emissions, whereas Africa um, is a country which is facing the brunt of the resulting pollution, the resulting uh, climate change. And um, I mean, there is no particular mechanism to actually compensate those countries, which is, I think, which there should be. So um, we as economists should definitely develop such a mechanism, whether we should pay through grants, you know, whether the country should pay through grants or, you know, they should compensate for the loss because the loss is very grave you're at, they're actually losing all the natural resources that they're, they're, they're rich things which they're actually you know dependent on as a livelihood so um that is another factor that needs to be addressed in um meetings and um research should also definitely be there because even um i think even in my class when i i i study environment economics we uh, study about market values which is the production function as every economist knows every economist loves but um we do not have much measures as to how we want to go about with for um you know different Non market value. So, for example, we can, I mean, it's very crude, but we can put a cost alive, which is a bit, as an economist, it's it's the truth. But we not, we might not be able to put a cost on the um, natural resource that is available. 
we have to use different non market values like a very common value is contingent valuation method so um these things need to be more you know addressed embraced and should be more effective so that we are able to um value them and then eventually provide a proper solution for the same and are able to recover what we want and what we lose at the end of the day so yes um apart from that i think a very um important thing is you know to accelerate the energy tra transition and mitigate greenhouse gas emissions um the you know we need like we have set goals so for example if i talk about india in specific there are policy packages packages that aim to reduce emissions by 15% by 2030 through renewable subsidies coal tariffs carbon trading but these like if i talk about subsidies so um there is a very famous um there was fame 2.0 basically it provided subsidies on purchase of uh, ev uh, you know electronic vehicles electric vehicles because um they were aiming to promote um basically sustainable transportation but due to issues it 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 failed to happen so i am not really sure i would really like to work upon you know um providing a better solution other than subsidies because um people tend to take advantage of subsidies rather than um you know making good use of it because subsidies is something which they feel is more beneficial and definitely they would not be up for tariffs in a country like india so um i would really like to work on this particular thing apart from that um you know there is a very uh, increasing need to create additional forest covers and i feel that it is very important that you know um finance uh, finances should be provided to actually improve forest covers you know grants should be given to countries to improve forest covers because it is something i mean um whenever you listen to news saying that amazon is burning it's very heartbreaking because they are like the lungs of the planet so um grants should be provided efforts should be made you cannot you cannot we cannot we cannot currently value what exactly how much we are losing every time a particular area of amazon gets burned so it's very important to understand and basically for again everything ends up in survival so it's very important that we retain these resources for our survival for our measures and our, and for our you know um future generation yes i think that's it okay well thank you so much it's a very passionate statement and certainly you have done your homework on it i didn't hear one thing which i would like to ask if perhaps you have already thought about it but i think many people don't think about it and that is that we have hooked our country to lpg for cooking for cooking now lpg is both uh, fossil fuel and it's imported so any thoughts on that um i mean um definitely because lpg is something um a major concern as to where you know we we try to make a trade off is that a lot of people are actually using um you know people are actually using gobar gas which is very which is which is very important because gobar gas actually does not create that much um effects but lpg is something a lot of people do not have access to yet people you know uh, we are trying we are ensuring that people get proper access to lpg um lpg pipelines are being set up but let's see how it you know um, actually helps whether it's beneficial benefit you know beneficial or not but end of the day let's see how things work because uh, lpg is something which is i i understood what the thing is that people are using lpg um very frequently but then it depends how we are actually working on it so again it a major 
a major like the base depends on the implementation of the policies and how you know we work as an economy towards it so how how we how uh, how much aware we are like i said that solar panels in the rural areas people are not aware about its maintenance it's it's similar to lpg so yes okay all right any uh, thing you want to tell us about your college days you said it's a giving place but what did you take so um i got into um I got into theater, so <laughs> we. I was into street street theater. We learned a lot about things. We learned. Um. We. I. I. I got to know that I was passionate about research through street theater because when you are uh trying to send across social messages, uh, we ensure we need to ensure that our statements, our data is all factual, is all correct. So um, it gave me a lot. and um i was a bit you know i tried doing everything going into stuff everything but then i i saw that my footing did actually lie in economics because i was really passionate about development economics my i think my professor in the college was very helpful in that always encouraging i remember my first project uh my first assignment was on menstrual waste management so it was it was really interesting how um you know i looked up for solutions and then i tried to check whether it's feasible or not so that is how i got to know that i really like um looking into gender economics and then because um my project was on menstrual waste management then i got to know that i really like and i would like to delve into the economy the green economics behind okay All right. Uh, what do you think of your future? Um, I hope to become a very good researcher so that I can contribute towards you know um making a sustainable solution for the um future generation. So I hope. Fingers crossed. I am learning, and I don't think that will ever stop because learning is something that can never stop at any age. So yes. Yeah. All right. Any tips you have for younger people, say perhaps who are in eleventh and twelfth, how to make decisions, what drives you, so such such things. Um, not as such. I mean, if you're very if you're very passionate about something, then go for it. Give it a try. You fail, but this is something which my professor, my teacher, told me once in school that fail is basically first attempt in learning. so so it's never whenever you fail you do not have to be disheartened because yeah. you might come up with another thing it's 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 human nature to adapt and to survive so you will mm -hmm. definitely come up with something more brilliant mm -hmm. and um again i've always learned that the whatever the first idea that comes to your mind you should discard it because that's something that you worked on instantly and when the first idea that comes to your mind you get an idea as to what you were thinking you will be able to develop it and it will come out to be something which will which is very beautiful so yes okay by the way one more question you mentioned a lot of issues in the energy transition in the green economy do you see rays of hope and optimism in india on these issues definitely i mean that is why i started off with the fact that um we are um we uh, with the positive news stating that india has moved and um uh, you know crossed japan and has become the third largest generator of renewable energy because there is always hope to you know um, improve there is always hope to excel there is always hope for um you know making things happen and um i feel that a lot of people like even um media these days does not actually highlight the um it just means it actually highlights the negatives but it should also highlight the positives with this uh, with the same rigor because it actually provides hope and it actually provides the drive for young minds to think that yes if this is happening then this is also happening 
you should never overlook or you should never ignore the positive side okay not the negative side because then you get to see the reality of what's behind so you should you should see the coin with both the sides so you yes. do see the positive side yes it's yeah. very important to see the positive no, but side. you do find it it's not whether you see it you do find it. yeah okay great <laughs> anything else you want to add here um nothing i mean i really liked i really liked the opportunity that you provided sir and i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude for giving me this platform to talk about might not be that much economics but i really enjoyed enjoyed you know talking about the what i'm passionate for well you know this channel is not for economists only we have every field here uh, not enough but we do have architects doctors engineers lawyers it's not for economists and it's also not just for indians it's for all desis so we do have people from pakistan bangladesh so on uh, because i think that the young people should have a better connection to people in the region you know but the politics may be different but at a people to people level i think we should have better contact okay anyway uh, that's uh, i think let's end it here today yes, and definitely. i'll be and i would i would like to express uh, you know express my wishes and um and hope to see you and talk to you again dr mathur and i would really love to join you again here and hope that you your initiative your revolutionary ideas um has no bounds and is growing at an excessive rate well it's doing you know much much better than i had ever anticipated but to be honest i'm not a kind of a guy who plans anything and especially this one because the whole point was who am i to plan it the whole point is that this is for young people and if you're going to plan it for young people you might as well say hey listen do as i say <laughs> that's useless <laughs> so i decided to have no planning whatsoever and it was very difficult in the beginning for the first 3 or 4 5 people <laughs> because there was no precedent they couldn't find it anywhere in youtube or the world or anywhere <clears throat> and i wouldn't tell them anything so but they they made it possible and it has evolved because of the young people so this is actually a uh, very happy thing and you know you have just validated the whole idea that if you give young people a chance then they will show that they are up to it right and therefore there's no point in not giving them a chance by saying oh you're too young you have nothing to say and you have nothing to add please listen to your seniors and yeah sure listen to your seniors i'm all for it but let's have a chance for young people too <laughs> so that's where we are okay let's say bye to the viewers i'll be back with another young person or an expert soon bye till then <laughs>